you have to do to clip down a single standing seam much like what you see right there I install clips with long tails on them see those are just clipped in right now and the panel will sit these will bend down and then bend back over the top to hold the panel because they didn't use high temp ice and water all these panels are adhesion adhesion to the roof which means they're all stuck to the roof which is probably why this roof has never flown off yeah you heard that correctly stuck to the roof you know i welcome you back to this video series everyone has been really looking forward to these videos clearly the last one i put up already has like 1200 views anyways we're getting into the paneling portion of the stage of this restoration project it's just it boggles my mind how hard these panels were to get up off the roof i'm just happy that we had the chance to rectify the situation let's get into the rest of the video get rid of this here this tab and then fold everything over I can cook the panel. I know in the comments you guys are gonna go crazy about this horizontal seam I'm connecting each panel with and yes you're right it isn't the most ideal connection but I had to match the existing and it seemed to function well on this roof so I didn't bother messing with it You can see the remaining roof to be covered is, is exactly the width of the panel and that is because we were able to split a sheet exactly in half and have the panels work out to the same dimension as the previous panels but with a mechanical lock standing seam instead of a single lock standing seam. So if you're thinking of doing, uh, whether should I do a single lock standing seam or should I do a double lock standing seam, um, the, the material usage is exactly the same. The, uh, a 15 inch wide panel uh, with three inches allowance for a mechanical uh, female and male on each side equals out to 18 inches whether you do single lock or double lock. So there's really no saving in material if you decide to go like the existing contractor here and do single lock. So you may be looking at this portion of the video and wondering, you know, why did he not pre-bend the panels before he installed them? To avoid having to make all these lines and make all these cuts after the fact. And yes, it is more difficult to do, but it's not completely impossible. But there's a very specific reason why I did it this way was because what we have to do is we have to double fold the ends of the seams before we turn the valley hook. So it would be virtually impossible to double fold the seam end so to close off the ends of each seam, I am double folding it. So here I am, I'm transitioning the size of, or the height of the seam down 
and now I'm double folding it over. And then after that, it gets crushed down right here again. So it's a double folded crushed laid down seam that's only three eighths of an inch high. So all of those seams would not be able to do that if I had pre-folded the, the bottom valley. So again, process and uh, procedure is very important in these uh, with these style styles of details. And um, uh, hopefully this video sheds a little bit of light on that. So what I'm doing here now is the valley hook. So the first turn of the valley hook, I have uh, uh, I have a, a seaming hammer there. It's uh, it's horizontal head and a vertical head. I, I really suggest you buy one. They're really handy to have. But I'm I'm pushing that lip down and underneath the valley hook. You see at the bottom of the screen, I have an exaggerated sized valley hook, and the reason for that is because what we're going to be doing here is we're folding this under once and then we're going to be folding it under a second time. So you basically have a double folded flat lock turned over twice on itself for a low slope waterproof detail. I'm heating up the cobber here to make it more manual, malleable. And uh, here we are uh, getting that second turn started. And yes, it is very time consuming. And there is a lot of work that goes into this and a lot of planning that goes into this. But, you know, when it comes to low slope and pooling and ponding water and sitting snow and spring thaw, you know, you sit at home and you wonder, and, and for any business owners out there, you really, really start to gain a respect for high quality work because you know, yeah, even though you pay more up front to have this specialty work done and you're going to pay uh, a craftsman, you know, probably double to triple what you would pay uh, normally guys for a typical standing seam. You know, what you pay up front is still a fraction of what you would pay for this roof to fail and to come back and to fix your mistakes, never mind the toll it takes on your reputation as a business. So, you know, you gotta really weigh these things out and really take into consideration the real consequences of, you know, poor worksmanship and lack of education. I have the machine all set up there's some adjustments in some of the wheels here that you have to do before you really start using it but I'm just showing you how quickly it is to get set up to your drill you have to have a chuck drill for this one you can actually get one of these awesome seaming machines at a website called www.storts.com I'll leave a link in the description for you to pick one up we have a promo going on with this company and if you use ASM 101 at checkout you get free shipping and uh, it helps support the channel a little bit so uh, thanks in advance one thing you gotta keep with you still on every job this just gets things started this machine has both single fold and double fold capability so we're gonna start with the single fold and do the first pass. So with the first pass complete, take the hand seamer and just start it. Do a little couple.
Click the video on screen right now to be brought to the next video in the series. We're gonna be focusing on the chimney detailing and the double fold sweeps that I'm gonna be doing around the base of the chimney. Um, before you go, make sure to go to the description, download your tool, uh, the tool list that I've made uh, for you to get started in double fold staining seam. And if you haven't watched the videos previous to this part, I strongly suggest you go back and do it. And you can watch the whole process from beginning to end. And I appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.